<laughs> Andrew, would you like to know the rare magic item that my barbarian possesses? Sure. Holy shit, that was loud thunder. I think I cut out the cloak of displacement. Ooh, nice. Yeah. I was gonna go with a generic, like, plus two great axe, but then I realized that I could basically do reckless attack forever. Mm -hmm. What does it do? Uh, cloak of displacement, any attack uh, against me has disadvantage. If I take damage, then the cloak of displacement stops working for the rest of uh, the turn until the end of my next turn. Mm -hmm. And and reckless attack gives people advantage on me, so if I use reckless attack, people just have a regular attack against me. I just have one thing left to choose, and it's whether or not I take a feat or an ability score improvement Ooh. for 8th level. My stats are already pretty decent. I could get constitution up to 20, but I don't know. I don't know, you want some health, right? I have 123 health. You want some more health, right? Yeah, I guess... Uh, two more hit points. Or really three. And another AC. Why would there be three more hit points? If I took it at level 8. Well, but it's you... retroactive. Yeah. So oh. 10 more hit points. Ooh, easy. So 30, 133. I saw a list of really cool uh, magic items for Barbarian, and then I saw Homebrew at the top. <laughs> it explained why they were all so good. There was one that was like a, a helmet, and when you activated its ability, every damage die worth of damage that you took in a turn, uh, you took one extra damage for each damage die rolled against you, and then on your next turn, every, uh, every damage die that you do in your attacks, uh, that's how many die the enemy rolls against you that turns to one damage. If that makes sense. Hmm. It was weird. But it was cool. Doing something kind of similarly weird in designing some new feats to learn blood magics. Ooh. Yeah, I've only just now realized that um, my innate spell casting won't work when I'm raging. So, I'll need to get my gust of wind out of the way right away. Mm. I still find it quite interesting that our that we still don't have a healer, but it's okay. <laughs> I we we have two abilities. kind of healers. Okay, yeah. Char characters that are going to be busy doing other things. Mm-hmm. I it, it's just funny, like in that way. Yeah. And, and now we have a barbarian. Mm -hmm. You have health, That's... but it's not. <laughs> I I do have health, and I have the cloak of displacement. Yeah. This is so. Gonna be fun. I'm gonna begin. Hello. 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 Yeah. What's up? No, sorry, my mom's not on the door. Hang on, let me unmute Mr. I... Hmm... I've never used a character with, um... What is it? Great... Great Weapon Master. How... How is that? Has anyone had experience with that? The whole take 5 penalty to the attack, and if it hits, you get plus 10 damage. Oh, I, good. I... I did the sharpshooter with that on my... Actually, remember when we were doing that one shot where there was the worm creature that was going through the mirror dimensions, killing us all over and over again? Yes. I took sharpshooter on that. Is that like the same thing but for guns? 
Uh, for bows. Yeah, for bows and crossbows. Oh, and okay. Um, I was able to take my plus 10 and drop it to plus 5, but get a guaranteed plus 10 damage onto my already ridiculous stuff. It was awesome. It was one of the ways where we almost were able to one-shot the dimension slug. Hmm. Well, that's that's good to know. Because I have that. I have... <laughs> nothing else to consider. The rest of these suck. I'm kind of surprised that there's nothing really built into the design that lets you intentionally buff your enemies so that in such a way that they can then be more vulnerable to you. Like, we have reckless attack for players, but you, you can't really have an enemy make a reckless attack and then everyone gets advantage on them. Yeah. That'll go badly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are we going to start this with um, a long or short rest at all? Because my character has pretty low health at this point. Oh. Well, remember, you guys are still running away from the fight. Mm -hmm. But no, a long yeah. rest is coming up. I do have that okay. in capital I'm not a need one. on my whiteboard. I will take Great Weapon Master. I suppose then, without further ado, when last we left our quote-unquote heroes, you took the Wayfinder device to your buyer after spending some time on a pirate colony, trans transportable pirate colony. Uh, while at the meeting, your employer, Marcellus Orfeo, paid you the addition, the secondary amount of 75,000 gold pieces. Panthers, was... shut up! Not me this time. Oh, not. Nope. Um, and then was slain by a large mechanoid figure who emerged from the wall. In the attempts to do battle with it, uh, one of your own, uh, Komund, uh, fell unconscious and was and perished before your eyes. You escaped into the night, but the creature still lurks. So, Let's start off this whole bit with what is known as a skill challenge. As okay. you're working to escape the city, the mainland, get back to your boat. Now, a skill challenge means you are definitely going to reach your ship. It, the only things that are variable during this are whether or, or how fast and how successful your journey is. Um, on your turn, you will be able to use any one of your skills that you are proficient with to, and make ro checks to affect the outside world. Um, some of them will, in order to help or help your cause or hurt the enemies. In order to make it to your ship as quickly and reliably and safely as possible, you will want to gain six successes before your enemy uh, gains three of your failures. Um, I'm sure we'll probably end up talking through the rules a bit more, but... I was going to say, is there an easier way for you to explain that? Um, when it's your turn, what you will have the option to... Like, if you... 
wanted to roll like a survival check to see if you could understand the layout of the streets and kind of point you in the right direction. That would be a roll, and and if you're able to... Would investigation work with that? Perhaps. Uh, the only condition is you can only use each skill once, and it must be something you're proficient in. Okay. I'm only proficient in four things. Well, it's a good thing there are two of you. Um, if you're in a scenario where you could maybe make an attack roll against something, uh, you can try that. Um, it's it's really up to you mm. what you want to do. Okay. So, without further ado, you have fled the club where you had met Orfeo. Uh, the Warforged being pausing for a moment inside the door, a few turns behind you. Jakal, uh, as I had in my initiative. Wait, no. Sorry, Vash, you were up first in initiative last time. Compared to. Okay. Me. What would you like to do? Keep running to the ship as fast as possible. Find the quickest route. Can I use my um, investigation to find the quickest route? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and that's a d20 I have to roll? Yep, d20 plus your investigation plus your proficiency. Well, your proficiency should already be added in, but. So I rolled a 14 and my. I am. An investigation of plus six. Okay. So I got a 20. Yep. So that would definitely count as a success for your group. Um, though you aren't necessarily familiar with uh, with this exact district, you are able to sense a pattern uh, with the different side streets being intersecting at different blocks and you're able to piece together from your memory what the fastest way back to your craft would be. Uh, mm. You gesture over to Jakal and the two of you begin dashing in that direction. Jakal, it is your action. Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to get into my D&D Beyond because I it's trying to get me to do a verification code, but I'm literally copy pasting this verification code and saying it's not right. I have a quick question. Um, so my investigation is plus six. There we go. But that's a subset of intelligence, and my intelligence is a plus two. So would that mean I would add eight total, or just the six for the plus six? Uh, for my just emergency? just the six because the intelligence okay. is already added into that. Well, what do you mean? Okay, it's already... so oh, I see what you're saying. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Are there people around us? Uh, there are some. It's kind of getting into the dusk hours, so not a whole lot, but okay. a couple. Is there anywhere to sort of hide to try to get break line of sight with us? Um, you can certainly try. Okay. Um... In that case, could I roll stealth then to try that? Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I hate this mobile. Hold on. I don't know where everything is. Can't take me a second. There we go. Skills. Okay. Um, stealth is at right there. Okay. I rolled a twenty-three. That is. Definitely a success. Um, Vash, you are you begin dashing, kind of gesturing around, and you see Jazal kind of uh, dashing in and out of different street corners, kind of uh, zigzagging across the street, um, hard to making himself harder to hit and harder to uh, focus upon. Okay. Uh, it is your turn. Um. Shit. I guess I'll use survival survival check? I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. Hmm. Uh, well, what would you use survival check for in a city? 
that's why I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I, I it's just one of the things I'm proficient in, so I'm not sure how to use it. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure how to use any of this shit. So uh, maybe I could roll intim- use our intimidation to force somebody to act as like a a shield to slow down the guy chasing this. Ooh, that, that's a great idea. Go ahead. Alright, so roll uh, 17. Okay. Uh, you definitely shout out, making yourself known. Um, people kind of start looking, getting, uh, get, putting a little bit more attention on you. Um, however, behind you they see a large mechanoid figure with glowing red eyes, and they kind of begin scattering out of your way. Helping to clear the path some more, you gain a success. Okay, which is all. Are there any animals around? Um. Uh, there are definitely some, but they're much more, much smaller, um, like rats and uh, insects. Okay. You might see like an occasional horse in a stable, but there there really aren't many large animals. Um. Then I guess that wouldn't do much. Then um. Perhaps. Also, oh, sorry. You are oh. also able to cast spells and such and make attacks if you so choose, uh, since you are proficient in spell castings. And I'm just throwing that out there. Does that mean I can also do some shooting on my turn? If you'd like. Okay. Uh, Will that count as the successes we need, though? uh, Success or failure, depending on whether or not you hit. Okay. I'll cast a spike growth um, that'll, like, cover the street behind us. Okay. You watch as Jizal kind of shifts out from their hiding place, and from in between the cobblestones in there, uh, making up the street, large vines kind of start spreading around with large spiky thorns, uh, making the area into difficult terrain. Uh, please roll me 1d20. Who? Uh, which is all. Okay. Um, eight. Okay. Um, you notice that as these spiky thorns begin to grow up, a lot of the panicking crowds start to trip over them. Um, the warforged's feet kind of crush un- crush the vines underneath them. It's a bit too heavy to have m- to take much effect from it. Uh, that gains your first failure. Uh, okay, Vash, it is your action. Um, I want to take my antimatter rifle and fill it full of holes. Okay. Uh, you have two attack action, two attacks in your attack action. So does that mean I could shoot it once with the antimatter rifle and shoot it once with bad news? You can try, yes. Alright, so I need to roll a d20 then. I rolled a 10. Okay. You watch as your antimatter rifle, the burst charges up. It seems to take almost a good couple seconds, and it fires out and just explodes around the warforged. Um, green lights kind of and a cloud of smoke just billowing around, uh, illuminating the, the streetways. I still have my other attack action? Yes. I'll shoot at it with bad news. Okay. Or can I... Am I able to shoot the antimatter rifle a second time, or do I have to reload it? Uh, you'd have to reload it first. <laughs> okay, well then I'll just shoot the um, bad news at it. Okay. Oh wait, I just realized. Never mind. Now! 
Roll a four. I shouldn't have been able to cast that spell because I'm still a bird. <laughs> well, it's Oops. okay. I, we'll, we'll roll with it going forward, but it's fine. Your claws were oddly flexible enough this time to allow semantic uh, casting. <laughs> Opposable my... talents. That's I rolled on the board and just screeching. Okay, you kind of spin backwards, cocking bad news. Uh, taking a quick look, fire. You see a large plume of smoke coming out of the end of your rifle as the bullet flies forward. Dink kind of just hits it hits the Warforged armor, kind of creating a dent in it, but not necessarily doing a dam doing much damage. Okay, Jazal, it is you. Okay, well in that case, um remembering that I'm a bird, I'm going to fly at a diagonal up and away. Um, using my perception to try to find a place to land and hide. Okay. Roll me a perception, then. That is 26. Okay. You take to the skies um, and begin scouting out. You see your ship off uh, very close now. Um... And you see that you can land there and begin preparations early enough. Uh, Vash is able to follow you uh, readily. Um, the Warforged still seems a good bit behind you. Um, it's not nothing you have do done has uh, slowed it much in its pursuit of you, but you are doing the best you can to evade it still. Okay, Vash, it is you. Um, I saw to reload my guns, though, don't I? Correct. Damn it. Uh, Alright, I reload my guns. Okay. Can I have, do I still have the ability to attack, or...? Yep, reload is a bonus action. Or at least that's how I'm reloading. Alright. So, I would like to go ahead and attack it with the anti-matter rifle again. Okay. Oh, no, motherfucker! Andrew, I sent you the like personality ideal bond thing of my character. Awesome. I I, I just saw that. Yeah. Um, sorry, uh, Seth. What was your roll? I rolled a five. Five. Uh, which gun was this? The anti manor rifle. I can't hit shit today. It's okay. You watch as Vash kind of takes another shot with the antimatter rifle. This one doesn't necessarily hit the Warforged, but you see its beam going into the streets, just throwing bricks up sideways, uh, carving. It'd be nice funny, room. like random citizens just start falling down and have my bed. Okay, and with that, you're able to, uh, you, you can take another shot if you'd like. You have another attack action. Um, However, the only weapon be... you have that is loaded are your pistols. Uh, well, never mind. We won't use the pistols. They're worthless. Okay. Uh, so with that, you're able to uh, follow Jazal in the skies over to your ship. Uh, you're able to land... Uh, Jazal is on board, uh, readying preparations. And, Vash, you kind of run straight from the city, and as the boat's kind of beginning to pull off the shore, just kind of getting into deeper water, you kind of take a running leap and land, and kind of catch yourself on the uh, side sidings. Nice. Pulling yourself into the ship. And the Warforged is going to make an attack against the ship. Okay. 
you watch as the eyes begin to heat up, uh, glowing with the same red energy you've seen before. And as you're pulling off the, as you're pulling off, heading into the open waters, uh, the eyes slam back, uh, slam. They hit you on the side of your ship, uh, burning into the hull. Okay. I'm not going to roll damage dice because uh, locations on the ship have a damage threshold. I'm just going to assume that it hits because the eyes do a shit ton of damage. Um, and for now, while you are escaping, your ship is on fire. No! And we have ended the skill challenge. Okay. Well... Um, in that case, since it is on fire, I should probably do something about that. That would um, be nice. Hey, at least Scorch Marks will help hide the fact that this is a naval vessel. Um, it certainly looks suspicious. So do I have a third level spell left? I... Uh, is it fourth level spell? It is fourth level spell. Okay, I'm gonna then control water to redirect flow. Um, to okay. Um. Yeah. Okay, so you watch. Or it'll as... come up around us. Mm -hmm. You watch as Jazal uh, begins performing gestures and controlling the water to his will. And the waves kind of start lapping upwards. And even though your boat is floating above them, they kind of start crashing into the hull as though you were a quote unquote normal ship. Uh, smothering the flames and the charred embers on the side of your ship, uh, you realize that none of the that the eye holes didn't burn straight through, so you don't have any leaks to plug. However, you do have a uh, generally rugged burn mark on, along the side. And with that, yes, you are on open waters. It is. The world is your oyster. What would you like to do? I'd like to take a long rest. As would I. Okay. That sounds very nice. Okay. Where would you like to take that long rest? Just on the open waters? Yes, please. Yeah. I need an ace that. Wait, so the boat's not actually sailing on the water. It's floating above it. Correct. Okay. I mean, they are on open waters. They're just. Is there of... a way to g make it normal? Like, make it not float above the water? Um, roll me an. Just a straight intelligence check. Straight intelligence. Okay. That is a fourteen. Okay. Um. You are able to deduce that a lot of the ship's more arcane abilities, such as it, it, its ability to float in the air, but uh, generally come from a large mechanical device that is housed below the main deck, uh, just kind of stored away, and powered by your sail. Uh, would collect enough energy during the day to power this device for long enough uh, to last hmm. for its sprints. It, it, you might be able to find some way to disable it, but at least yeah. as far as from hmm. that role, you're not entirely certain as to how. 
probably don't want it to say but well it's um yeah I guess just take a take a rest here um where's the rest button on this thing this um, is weird. if it's D and D beyond I don't think they have a designated long rest button but I might be wrong. they do actually I think you just have to manually you go. your health and just, uh, they have either. one so okay. without my without my rogue do either of them know how to sail the ship no. <laughs> oh, no. Hang on, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Clockwork, you're a Minotaur, right? No, I'm a... Uh, fire that Ganassi. fire thing. Oh, Fire Ganassi. Ganassi. Wait, who's the Minotaur? Pebbles? No. You're Oh, you're Leonin. Oh, shit. Because I was thinking I, Minotaurs are naturally proficient with ships. Hmm. All right. Too bad we're not Minotaur. <laughs> Too bad I'm dead. Too bad. Haha, <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Well, I can use perception to probably fly this thing. Uh, would either of you guys like to take watch? Uh... Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, each of you, I am assuming two shifts, right? Yeah, I guess. Okay. So, would each of you Perfect. roll a d12 for me, please? A d12? Mm hmm. Interesting. Gotta test for random encounters. A six. I rolled a nine. 69. Nice. Noise. <laughs> Okay. Whew. Um. Okay. Um. So, Vash, on your watch, mm -hmm. um, you kind of hear calls, um, kind of a screeching from the air far above you. That's not good. Um, it's relatively easy to see the night sky as you've brought your sail down um, to try and maintain um, a stable location in the waters uh, throughout the night so you can rest easy and not have to worry about the ship moving on its own. Um, without any place to distinctly land or provoke any danger, the harpies passing overhead, searching for adrift sailors, have nowhere to roost. You survive this encounter. Uh, Jazal, the rest of the night passes uneventfully. Poggers. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. The sun begins to rise as you complete your long rest. Mm. Mm. Here, let me check my skill. Um... Can I make an arcana check to try to look more into this wayfinder? Just see if there's any specific marked locations that are different than the others? Absolutely. Uh, how do I make this check? This is weird, because it's not on my fucking page. Uh, arcana is intelligence-based, so... Yeah, okay, there we go. It'll just be a straight intelligence roll, basically. Okay. I, it just, on the mobile, it apparently cuts out most of the skill tree if you don't have proficiency in it. And that's the skill list. That's so where I'd find it. 
All right. That is a 13. Okay. Um, you see that the Wayfinder is made up of different rings of discs. Um, as you kind of turn it on, the runes around it can uh, glow a similar green energy to... Actually, to Vash's antimatter rifle. Um, not necessarily drawing a cor uh, correlation between the two, but it is a similar... All right, shoot it. <laughs> um, uh, as you kind of bring up the map around you, um, you can see the <coughs> land, the mainland, right behind where you, uh, where you had stayed the night before. Um, it seems to have shifted. You can uh, pull in a little bit closer and see the damage is done as you had made your escape path. Um, as for its as for location stored in it uh, you zoom out uh, kind of pulling uh, more and more space away, uh, losing detail but at least for this disc that you are looking at there are no locations uh, mapped out already onto it okay so maybe that other guy had something else, like another part of it that we don't have. All right. Well, I'll, I guess I'll put that, the Wayfinder right now, uh, up on the board, and I guess I'll try to figure out the ship okay. and try to get us away from the land for right now. Okay. Uh, you place the Wayfinder on the dash panel, and it kind of lights up just uh, with the same arcane nature as it's kind of back to roost. Uh, go ahead and... Okay. Let's make this a... Intelligence check to... I mean, obviously you know that the wheel will shift it back and forth. You'd seen Komon doing this beforehand. Um, and to get it moving, all you had to do was raise the sail. So the ship is still relatively straightforward, so this is going to be a relatively easy roll to get moving. Okay. I got a 16. Okay. Yes, uh, you're able to get the ship started. Um, probably not moving towards max speed, but you're able to... Uh, kind of tilt with the wayfinder and know just in which directions uh, you're able to safely travel at, and control the waves under. You are able to move and navigate. Awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> where do we want to go? I don't know. Did we already deliver what we were supposed to deliver and get our reward? Well, got your... we got the reward and the guy got killed, so we took back the thing we were supposed to deliver. <laughs> uh, well, shit. So we've got both the reward and the object. What's the object good for? It's a map. To where? Everywhere. Let's find something expensive on the map and go steal it. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> I'm just gonna say. Uh, it, it's like just like a really good map. Like it's like a GPS, basically. Basically. Yeah. Well, we can't type in rich person's house. <laughs> I like how yeah. I don't don't even don't even investigate the giant trouble. laser robot. <laughs> just go pillaging. <laughs> I want to get into trouble, man. Let me get into trouble. Giant laser robot, we have no clue. We're, we're running away from him. We're not going towards him. Did you guys get the money that was on my dead character? I did. Okay, good. I got the money on the Wayfinder. That's why good. I flew over to you. <laughs> and the bag, right? You got the bag, right? Well, the bag had the money. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> what bag? The bag of holding. Uh, we have a bag of holding. We do yes, now. It's full of money. Oh, shit. Yeah. 
I'm glad he got it, because I didn't even know that. We could just be pirates. We, I want to be pirates. What am I saying? Um, we, you guys, could be pirates. I want to be a pirate. Um. To be fair, though, I forget most of the shit. Are we there do. any nearby settlements that aren't the one we just came from? Like anything smaller? Um. You know that the pirate bay is kind of set up to what would be your north well it it would be to the west of where you are um maybe a little bit north but primarily west um and you know that that doesn't show up on the wayfinder um there is uh relatively close by the municipalities district uh where that you kind of sped by under the bridges when you were being chased by the navy um If you head in the opposite direction of that, um, you would be kind of heading into the different baronies and their uh, waterfronts. So that would be a decent way, I, I assume, to escape the navy, but it's not necessarily a guaranteed score, I guess. It's just more provincial territories on the waterfront. Um. Oh. Um. Do we have... Okay, let's go into the pirate bay for right now. We should buy a second sail to where if we don't want to be floating all the time, if we want to be a little bit more stealthy, stealthy, we buy a normal sail and use that instead. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's going to take you about maybe maybe an hour. It's not it's not horribly far offshore. Well, it it's offshore, but it with your your ship's speed, it's not it's nowhere near as bad as it would be if you were taking a regular vessel. Um. So you're able to kind of coast in up to where you'd seen the interwoven docks and the large lattice work of planks. And you see of the several dozen ships that were there yesterday, um, a good number of them have departed. Uh, there's about eight different vessels uh, stocked there, and you can see... Uh, several individuals kind of floating with the water, pulling the different planks up and folding them on hinges that you probably didn't even notice as you were walking around on them. <gasps> okay, you're able to pull into dock relatively easy as your vessel, while definitely unconventional, is without a doubt recognizable. What would you like to do? Well, as we get off, I would like to go find a sailmaker then, in that case. Okay. Um, as you're looking around, um, wandering through the docks, uh, you realize that many of the shops have kind of been torn down and moved onto their respective ships. Um, you are able to find a sailmaker, but it seems to be one of the last... Um, sail oriented shops remaining on the docks as they're being torn down and moved. Okay. Um, I walk in and I say, good sir, may I see your wares? Okay. The individual is who is there <laughs> is a kind of orangish tabaxi they kind of turn oh, around. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, they kind of turn around and... What wares are you looking for? Uh, you notice that one of their eyes has kind of been clawed out. Uh, and they have a large <laughs> eye patch kind of over their head. 
on the other eye. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> can I pet um, the kitty? You can certainly hey, that's, try. I want to pet the kitty. I want to pet the kitty. I'm a cat. I want to pet the kitty. You're, you're doing this to a smaller, lesser form. <laughs> um, no, but uh, what do I have to roll I, to pet the kitty? Roll a dexterity saving throw. That's a d20. <laughs> yes. Okay. Hang on. I think D and D Beyond will roll my dexterity on its own. Well, saving throw. There we go. Well, what's the difference? So it's the it's the D twenty plus my modifier, right? Uh, you might be right. proficient in a saving throw versus just dexterity. Dexterity oh. doesn't have a proficiency bonus, so it'll be just below your stats. Well, on the D and D Beyond. Throws. Oh, saving throw. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So yeah, I rolled a 17 total. Okay, uh, you reach your hand out, uh, trying to trying to pet the tabaxi salesperson. <laughs> um, your hand definitely manages to graze their their head before their arm kind of pins it pins you to the ground, kind of clawing at you. I'm sorry for my friend, feisty kitty. You're you're not getting any reaction from them. Just a well, just a pure look of don't fuck with me. <laughs> just like I was, <laughs> just I was in the market for a sale. Ours is for a different use than normal, and we would like a normal sale as well. Okay, uh, let's. Mind if you take me to your ship so I can get some necessary what? measurements and... Yes, yes. And I'll lead him over to the ship. Okay. You walk back to your ship and you can see that the tabaxi is immediately taken back by the strange designs and intricacies of your vessel. Um, your ship sail is large and triangular. It's... Uh, far different than the usual galleon style uh, sh sails that they would have there but they're able to kind of look around and uh, your ship's sail is designed similar to a to that of a much larger small sailing vessel um, so they're able to get the necessary measurements and head back to the store um, it's going to take me about a couple hours to pare this down, uh, make it suitable for you, but in the meantime, uh, feel free to wander about. Uh, I'll let you know once I have your wares ready. All right. Thank you, good sir. I'm sorry about my friend again. Just see that he doesn't make it a habit. But kitties are pretty. I want to pet the pretty kitties. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 you can see that the tabaxi's annoyed, but unsure of whether or not to take that as a compliment or not. Okay. So you've got about two hours until your sale is ready. Anything else you would like to do while you are here? I don't know. I think I'm good. I got to pet the kitty. Okay. Uh, one of the last uh, open areas is uh, the tavern. They're not going to tear that down with all the booze in it so soon into the process. Uh, you can that that is an option um there seems to be a couple of the artificer shop is still open um for business um you notice that a lot of different stands that were held that were selling things like ropes and almost trinkets and money changers have 
kind of begun to break down and are moving their ships, moving their wares back to their ships. Um, wandering by the artificers area, you notice that a lot of their inventory seems to be depleted as it's been being transported back. Oh. Uh, as you're wandering around, um, you notice that the docks, that the planks that are holding it, um, are being continually flipped and uh, kind of stored upright until it, and just folded accordion style, and then kind of bound by ropes. And as individuals are using control water to change the shape of the waves to package the ship, the, the bay up, and prepare it for moving. Um, you've got two hours to kill. Anything you'd like to do, or just return to the ship, individuals you'd like to speak to? I got nothing on my mind. I just want to loot stuff. Well, if you're interested, there are about eight ships around. How much trouble will we get in? That's up to you to decide. What do you want to do? Um, I want to lay low, because last right. time we came here, we brought the Navy. So people are probably packing up from that. So that's not to get them any more angry. Fair enough. We'll keep it peaceful for now. I'll just probably stay on the ship just to make sure nobody messes with it until the box comes back. Okay. Um, while you're there, you manage to see the one uh, half work that you had released onto the island. Um, Kind of paid off some of their troubles. Uh, they're carrying um, kind of large planks and kind of a, at least the makings of a shop back to easily the largest ship in, still in port. The one that had uh, skewered the other dragonflies that had been following you. Um, Vash, what would you like to do during this time? Well, if we're laying low, I guess I guess I don't know. I guess I shouldn't talk to the orc because he'll probably freak out. Mm -hmm. uh, you can head to the ta hang out at the tavern, pay a couple of gold, get some drink, I guess. That's an option. Alright, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, you enter the tavern and it's a lot busier than it was uh, the last time you were here. There are several tables more filled and several different crews kind of sitting around, smoking some cigars, playing cards, drinking. Uh, Ooh, cigars. Uh, it's, it seems to be a much more relaxed, robust, and busy establishment as they're kind of getting their last drinks before moving out and finding a new location for their bay. There are, perhaps, there are about, well, the tavern itself has about 20-some different tables, but there are at least eight that are of more interest to you. Mm. More individuals at them. Alright, let's go to one of the interesting ones. Okay. So, one moment while I kind of make a note here. Okay. So, the first table you kind of come across on your left, um, 
that has a good number of people. There's three surrounding it. Um, they kind of seem much more roguelike, and uh, you can see that they've got missing body parts, uh, like a hook for a hand, and um, just very mean individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they don't necessarily seem like the kind of folk to be messed with. Um, uh, closer towards the inside, uh, you see a table with eight individuals around it. It's a very busy table. Uh, you can see that they're at the my gosh, why can't I speak right now? Um, that the barkeep is conti continually having to send uh, waiters and servants over there to refill their glasses. It uh, seems to be a very affluent table. Mm. Um, sitting around that table, you see a elven woman, um, very tall, wearing red and silver robes. Um, very noble-esque, at least. Um, you see kind of a... Oh, hang on, hang on, I have this written out. Uh, okay, you see a large goliath, um, kind of hunched over with a deck of playing cards, kind of looking through, trying to make a move on the group, that, on someone there. Um, you see a small gnome who is consistently running around trying to peek at other people's cards um, and attempting at least to steal a small pistol off of a off of the off of the Goliath there um, another stealing individual, guns <laughs> another individual at the table is a young human, or young at least by appearance, human woman, um, keeping very to themselves, kind of secluded. Um, then there is a dark elf there as well, uh, just kind of playing around with the cards and more, more interested in the ale and the ambiance than any other f bits of the game. Um... As you're kind of scooting around and looking through at the different tables, there's one where you see a handful of uh, dwarves uh, enjoying their meads. And nope, oh, there went my whiteboard. Um, <laughs> a handful of dwarves just kind of enjoying, relaxing, taking it easy, telling uh, old seamen's tales. Um, off in the far corner, there is an individual, uh, a single individual at their own table, um, kind of just deep into a large book. Um, okay. Well, first things first is someone's got to teach that gnome that you're not allowed to steal guns from people as long as they're alive. So I'm going to shoot him with my antimatter rifle. Okay. This is going to be interesting. Uh-oh. <laughs> Go ahead and make an attack roll. Um, all right. D&D &D Beyond says I have a total of 18. Okay. How many dice are you using? All fucking six. Okay. And you said you had an 18 damage. to hit? Yeah, 18 to hit and 31 damage. Okay. Um, You're not allowed to steal pistols on my watch. You must defeat them in fair combat if you want their weapons. Okay. As you kind of stand at the doorway, you sling your rifle over your shoulder um, power it up in your hand and let loose this volley of eldritch energies 
uh, at the table. <laughs> I mean, basically at all of them, but intentionally attempting to hit the gnome who is heading around. And, and with that, you see the leader, at least it seems, the noble, stand up reacting to your shot and deploying a wrist-mounted shielding device um, as your energies kind of are blocked and dissipate over a large network of energies of similar design to your sail. Um, but I was aiming at the gnome. <laughs> you were certainly aiming at them, but the blast is hitting is heading towards the table, given your positioning. How how high of a number do you have to get to hit the gnome? Well, you were he had uh, half cover, which is plus five to AC because he was beneath the table. Um, he has his normal armor, and so it would probably be it would be a really high roll to just smite the gnome. Uh. Um, so. You've drawn some attention to yourself here. Oops. Yeah, that's okay. I quickly point at the gnome and say, he was trying to steal a gun. The elven figure walks over towards you, the one who had blocked your shot, and... Well, of course. It's... That's just tick, the way that they are. He's our crew's powder monkey. They serve to maintain and upkeep our weapons. Now, as to what he's doing getting it in the middle of our card game, I have no idea. Maybe you should take that up with him yourself. However, you should not be firing mem uh, firing your artillery at my crew. Hey, it's sacrilegious to steal another man's gun while he's breathing. Well, then I'm quite interested in seeing how you got... How I'll get yours. Well, now nah, that'll be interesting, won't it? Let's fucking do it! Are you serious? Uh, no, I'm terrified now that you think. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm just making sure I have to pull up the right stat block here. I'm afraid. I'm afraid now, Andy. <laughs> You're scaring me. Because this delves into the realm of homebrew. What does that mean? It means something that I invented. Uh, I'm nope. I'm done. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just giving you enough warning to make sure you want your character to die. If you tell me it's homebrew, I'm not doing it. There's a lot in this game that's homebrew. Your rifle is homebrew. I'm fucked. <laughs> Dude, I'm fucked. If, if this thing is homebrew, it's gonna destroy me, isn't it? No, she's actually a really nice individual. You just shot a gigantic energy blast at her. At well, I was her. trying to shoot the gnome. Who is on her crew. Yeah, it's a stupid gnome. Fine, I'll leave her alone. Tell me. She kind of, as you're kind of, kind of turning away, tell me, what crew are you with? I'm with my own crew. Really? I feel like I've seen you in here before. Tell me, what's we were, what, what ship are we you? We were here once. Yes. We brought the Navy with us. Right. Yes. The ones that <laughs> my crew was tasked with eliminating. Mm, cool. Yes, it's... Well, actually, it was very much the opposite. You see... Now, because of the mess that you've created, we're helping to pack up shop and relocate this island, and hopefully so somewhere you would not, not be able to find us. Well, I always heard if it doesn't make you smile, you should get rid of it. Very well, then. Um... Now, if you would please leave us to our business, and just quite fuck off. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, wow. Okay, um... <laughs> Everybody gangsta till the railgun gets pulled out in the bar fight. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> oh, man. You, you, you were... You almost smote her weapons master. That's not a good thing. Well, is she gonna be important later? She could be an ally. It's probably gonna be harder to now, but hey, what am I supposed At to say? At this rate, it might be an enemy. <laughs> I'm just doing me. Hey, okay. Okay. I don't As know you how kind to of... play the game. That's fine. It's fine. It's we wouldn't have gotten that interaction if you had. So, uh, as you're kind of wandering around the bar, kind of picking up different drinks and uh, chatting, another individual walks in. Um, large, gray uh, form, uh, very broad head with small eyes at very at the various ends. Um, gills on the side, completely shirtless. Um, holding over their arm, they have some large thorny tails. Uh, and almost a, almost as if braided in together into a whip. Mm. Tanner, would you like to introduce your character? <clears throat> what you have seen just step into the doors is Kars Gorath. He is a triton who looks like an almost seven foot tall gray humanoid with uh, the head of a hammerhead shark. He is carrying over his shoulder the tails of uh, demon rays, these sort of monstrous manta ray kind of things. And he's wearing this, this long black cloak that has the paws of displacer beasts at the bottom because it is made of that. Uh, he kind of looks around the room and then looks over at you guys after you've uh, kind of you know, fired off big guns and then almost <laughs> killed each other. <laughs> the Square Anon Dawes. He walks forward towards the bartender and holds out the uh, tails. This was the last of those folk. A shame we might not, but leaveth for the nearby waters art safer. This was him saying this was the last of the manta ray things. Okay. The barkeep uh, pulls them off of your shoulder and drops a and drops some gold into your hand. Uh, it's worth. Uh, you get a total of seven platinum pieces for your service. I thanketh thee. Kind of nods and begins taking the rays back. Uh, I for... doth not knoweth who is I shall follow with now. That's when I perk up and approach him. Not us. Hmm. <laughs> 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 we 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 need some extra firepower on our crew if you're willing to join. Anyone who's willing to get into mischief and chaos. Where art thee going? We don't have anywhere in particular planned the split second, but wherever the open sea will take us, we'll get into chaos and trouble. We also got this giant mechanoid thing made of metal chasing us down, so that'd be a fun fight too. Hmm. I knoweth not about yond lasteth part, but I shall followeth. Yeah. Um, roll insight. Just Tanner, just for a second, roll insight. Me? Give him yep. a big hug. Okie dokie. Uh, dice. Seven. Okay, you're good. Yep, everything he says seems. Seems completely genuine. My better judgment doesn't kick in. Uh, you don't really notice any reactions from anyone else at the incredibly strange sounding tales that he was telling. Alright. I give him a big hug. 
and say, welcome aboard. Hmm. I don't react as, as you hug my waist. Hmm. Fair. Okay. You have met your... What kind of creature are you again? Huh? What kind of creature are you again? Uh, like a big... Here, here you know what? I have a, I have a picture. That'll... Yeah, that, that'd what, be great. what race, Tanner? Triton is oh, okay. the original race, but I took some artistic liberties. And I let him. This is this is me enjoying a book. Fishman! Fishman, we gotta keep you away from Kitty Cat. Kitty Cat will eat you. I think <laughs> it, I think at this rate I might eat him. Fair point. Uh you do you know how many sets of teeth I have? A shark lot, versus I'm lion. Guessing. I could also turn into a killer whale if we get up an underwater fight. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> this is awesome. I would love to see that. Oh, I should have also mentioned I have a great axe on my back. Mm. But I'm a and barbarian that's part of the course. Or not, not literate, but eloquent in speaking. Yes. Okay. I learned common, but it was a while ago. Okay, so. Meeting your new friend and catching up. Uh, learning more about each other you eventually begin to decide to make your way back to the ship uh, as you're there you notice Giselle working with the tabaxi to kind of help rig up the secondary sail as a means to uh, well have a second want well, to have a secondary sail just in general um, you can see them kind of working with different wires that attach at the top to hold it onto the post and kind of that would be used to channel energy and so they've kind of implemented a secondary bar so you can lift the sail and kind of furl it upwards uh, upward so you don't actually have to disconnect any of the electrical means and then that would reveal a secondary sail that is just normal cloth uh, beneath a very fine job. Mm. And you, uh, you, you, uh, I can't speak right now. Uh, Jazal and the Tabaxi are finishing up, uh, or at least seem to be in the final stages of deployment when the two of you return. Jazal, we have a new friend. <sighs> now do we? <laughs> yes. Can we keep him? I guess. Yes. <laughs> Hello. I am half kept. You're half what? I am kept. Ah. Uh. Uh, you see, kind of following them out of out of the bar, the cr the other crew that, unbeknownst to you, Jazal, um, Vash had beefed with, uh, heading over to the large <laughs> the large galleon in port, uh, the Quarry Fang. Uh, they they seem to kind of indignantly be walking their way and you see the gnome uh, pulling the flintlock pistol out of the goliath's holster and taking a moment uh, to it, it almost aim in your general direction <laughs> Uh, is there anything that you would like to do or, or try to react with? Or... Mm. 
No. Okay. No, I don't do anything. I want to shoot him, but it'll backfire, I'm sure. You hear the fire kind of ricochet. Uh, you hear the fire kind of burst off uh, as uh, the gnome fires um, with a 26... Gnome fucking shot at me? Yes. <laughs> All right, then I'm fucking shooting back. Okay. You little bastard. You take a total of Sorry. Uh, 23 points of piercing damage. 23? Yeah. Good grief. And then you, you see him quickly just kind of return the pistol to its holster and just continue walking away as if nothing happened. Alright, I'm gonna take aim and shoot at the fucker. Hello. Okay. Oh. Um, I roll a 22. Okie dokie. With the antimatter rifle. Okay. You take... Sh does, you it, does it hit? That does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Um, hang on, it's not showing me damage. Come on. Why didn't it show me damage? 31 damage. Okay. You unleash a volley of energies in the direction of this gnome, who uh seems to attempt to dodge out of the way but ends up taking a good brunt of the damage you see the kind of red leather armor uh, singed up and kind of smoke and I need you to make a dexterity saving throw Vash I rolled ooh a natural 23 okay um, in the blink of an eye uh, you feel yourself almost falling backwards over. Um, but not quite. Um, your head uh, definitely feels over as the sea foam kind of starts licking up towards you. And you see a hand holding, your, holding you over the edge of the boat. And it's their captain. Guess who? He fucking shot at me first. And you claim to know... And yes, he will be disciplined justly. You claim to know what is right in this society, and so each you shot at him first. If you... If you can't take it, then don't deal it out. No, I did deal it back out. I took it and dealt it. So leave us the fuck alone. Look, my crew member will be disciplined justly, and I highly suggest that yours do the same. And with that, she kind of drops you, and you kind of hit your back on the side of the boat and just and roll backward into the... Uh, roll backward onto your ship, and she just walks off. Mm. Oh, boy. <laughs> Not the way I was expecting this character to go, but okay. <laughs> um, and you notice that throughout the entire time, no matter where you look at her, it almost seems as though she's... No matter how you look, she almost seems like she's staring at you, and you aren't entirely sure why. It just feels like she's watching you in... through, like, an ethereal plane. Mm. Yeah. So, um, the tabaxi finishes the work on your ship, um, and 
offers up the total for payment uh, with modifications to the sale it's going to run you about 350 gold pieces that's not bad at all I pay him gladly and tip him 50 more okay. for his speed he thanks you uh, and then begins to head back to his shop with uh, some of the extra pieces that he had uh, used to cut off of the sale and you are free to your own devices. What would you like to do? I'd like to heal up. Okay. So would that be cure wounds or hit dice? Uh, all I got is cure wounds. Okay. You can spend that if you'd like. Uh, I only get five health. Shit. Hardly anything. Better than being dead. I mean, I'm I was at seventy one health. Now I'm at seventy six. Big fucking whoop. <laughs> I'm gonna get back up to ninety four. Okay. Um, so, yes, the three of you have your own ship now. Um, what would you like to do? Where would you like to go? I don't know. You're welcome to like look around the ship, Tanner, since you're new. Um, I mean, sure, there's not much there. I, I make myself <laughs> familiar with it. Okay, I mean, it's a very well put together but very tiny vessel, it doesn't appear to be any armaments on it. Uh, you have small. the blink rune uh, carved into the hull well, not the hull, but the deck. Sorry. Oh yeah, my rogue was hyped about that. <laughs> so, what what skills do you all do you have that you bring to us? Hmm. I'm like a gunslinger. Dothy has Not to stay you. alert for the ship. Uh, <laughs> the only man who knew how to pilot the ship died a little while ago. So. Uh, no. I can I can operate it but not well. I am familiar with the operation of naval cowtel. Apparently oh. that is how Shakespeare would write craft. <laughs> huh? Hey, very cool. Did not know that. I will sail the ship. Good. <laughs> okay. Make well that you don't crash it. Tis fine. <laughs> we can swim. Yeah, we don't even need a ship. We can both just swim. Yeah, if my swimming speed and breathe underwater class feature fails, I always have my racial feature, which is the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Doubly good. Mm -hmm. uh, Giselle kind of takes you back uh, to show you into the captain's quarters, just what's around. Um, it's a very simple setup. Um, windows are kind of around full panel view so you can see out side of the ship um, you've got the wheel in there um, it's, a, it's a very protected um, quarters very protected um, 
Gosh, what's the word? Had it just the other day. Oh, it's it's a very controlled helm. Um, kind of sitting in front of the wheel, you see a strange silver object, kind of embedded into the panel. I. Uh, uh, okay. What would you like to do? Meta talk. Is this the wayfinder? Yes. Okay. Some uh, your character would have no idea what is or what it does. Right. Uh, I I pick it up and just kind of turn it around in my hands and uh, accidentally activate it. I, I guess. make sure he doesn't like drop it or anything. I start to explain what we know it to do. Okay. Uh, it's a very heavy metal contraption. Lots of uh, different runes kind of alongside it just to project and display localized points of energy. Um, what kind uh, As he's explaining it to me... And like I see it work, my mouth just slowly like opens up a bit more as I'm just I have absolutely no idea how to react to this weird device. Okay. Um Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. So what would your crew like to do? Anything that makes money or creates a little bit of chaos. Let's think. I can talketh to sharks. As can I. <laughs> you can be a shark. I can. As can I. As can I. Gosh. I can shoot a shark. That is... hey, hey, Frank, as your characters explained to me the workings of that of the Wayfinder, uh, you realize that aside from the cloak, the only other thing I'm wearing is a purple Speedo. <laughs> just, just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. Uh, a, large, a, lo a large and loud horn kind of beats uh, through the air. And... You see a couple other ships start pulling different closed up and bounded uh, pieces um, from the docks and le and begin leaving. Uh, the large ship that you had kind of pulled in next to you, the one that uh, you seem to be at odds with right now, uh, is one of these. I think just two, just a session ago, you were being offered to join me. What would have gone? What would have happened then? <laughs> the only person who would who wanted to join is dead now. <laughs> yes. Okay. So yes. Uh, Maybe it's a curse. If you want to join, you die. <laughs> yeah. So three. Three or four of the other ships kind of in the docks kind of start departing, pulling different plank pieces and plank bundles behind them. Uh, That's cool. What's left is a couple local shops and businesses and several much smaller uh, sailing vessels and different ventures. You see uh, there's kind of a almost more of a garden-esque looking ship. Uh, it's got different plants growing on it. It seems to be where they make the different meads and ales that are sold in the tavern. Um, there are a couple more that are dedicated to uh, rope production, and so you'd see different um, armaments and different weaponry and different tools built into, this, into the ship's decks to further help produce these wares. Um, there's several long ore ships that are 
kind of just transporting different materials back and forth between shops on the mainland, kind of coming in and coming out, uh, transporting loads. I'll take a background seat to this. I keep fucking things up. No, you're, I mean, you're fine. I mean, I, I, I can do most things here. I just need to know what you guys want to do. Well, I don't know what to do right now. That's why I'm taking a bit of a background seat. Hmm. Uh, so we're looking for something to do. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, sp speaking separately from our unique party and ship, my D and D instinct tells me find a tavern, go into tavern, see if jobs are posted that need doing. Um. Preferably something that would take advantage of our skill sets. One thing I will ask is, <clears throat> for those, you said baronies, are those not affiliated with people we stole the, the ship from? Um, oh shit. The Navy is controlled by one of them. Uh, there are a total of seven different uh, great houses. Um, House Waterford is one. They, they're the ones who maintain the navy. Hmm. Um. But you said we can go the opposite way. Right. Maybe. We can head around. Oh, go ahead. Well, just, I was just going to say it'd be slightly more safe. Yeah, uh, heading uh, in a more northward direction is going to take you back to uh, most of where the Ilavero territories are, uh, and then heading uh, a bit more northward after that is going to take you to uh, the docks of House Waterford, which maintains the Navy and is their main presence on uh, the island of Cirrus, um, the island nation. Um, heading in the opposite direction, kind of south, and then uh, further east, uh, that's going to take you across and around to a lot more of the different houses who have far different political controls over the city and the nation, the Imperium as a whole. Okay. Uh, some of these houses are generally aligned, more aligned with the Navy. Some of them are not. Um, how, uh, roll me an, I guess, history check. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, to see if you'd know which ones are which. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay. So, you notice know that if you would travel to, gotta find my tab that has all of the just listed out. But um, you know that it's kind of about fifty-fifty, just at the start, as to who is aligned with the navy and who isn't. Um. Uh, just one sec. Uh, you know that the, uh, that the uh, barony that is to the farthest north of the island, um, that is named after Baron Quinn, 
Uh, they are probably the most aligned with the Navy as they protect as the Navy protects imports and they are in charge of maintaining a lot of oil and poppy exports. Um, so these are some of the things that, that, that sell really well outside of Cirrus. Um, they're also in charge of doing a lot of iron production. And so they're going to be very well aligned with the Navy who is using that iron to make their vessels. And it's a very back and forth uh, relationship that those two baronies have. Um, come on. A um, couple of the other ones, um, the House of Malaric is primarily religion and faith based. It's definitely not necessarily aligned with one political faction in the city, uh, whether it being geared towards armament or for defense. So yeah. Um, they would probably be the one that you would encounter first heading eastward, heading southeastward. Um, Who was the person we were intercepting at the other... Like, uh, there was the Navy people, and then there was another person they were talking to. Yes. Who was that? Uh, that was Admiral Merrick Ilvaro. Ilvaro, sorry. Um, he is in charge of maintaining the western ports of the city. Um, he's the one who receives a lot of in, of uh, imperial imports, and so he maintains a lot of exports, whereas the Navy defends the water so outside. They were just maintaining a peace treaty that was ongoing. Um, yeah. get to a couple of the other ones you'd have to go more inland which would take the isthmus not it's probably the wrong term um but that kind of bisects the continent in half So what do y'all think? I think we should look for jobs and money. Uh, you definitely know that a lot of these uh, rich baron types are very wealthy and affluent people. Um, Ooh, maybe we could steal from a baron. Or we could do a job for a baron. <laughs> I don't think we'd yeah. successfully steal. Where's your ambition? Uh, or no, maybe it's somewhere within this 350 pound of hard to disguise hammerhead shark. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's just work for a bear in this. Okay. Um, so, one second. It's going to depend on who you want and if my document loads. Okay. So the first of the possible Berenice to look for is, as I had mentioned, House Quinn. Um, they're much more of a manual labor uh, and synergistic with the Imperial Navy. Um, there's House Waterford, of course, who maintains the Navy, the Strait, uh, imports, exports, and kind of defense. Uh, the House of Malaric is the more religious uh, zealotry, and they kind of maintain all sorts of fealty to spirit entities and interactions with the arcane. Uh, House Harval is one of the lesser houses um, they're found much more inland um, they are a 
they're, they're, they're much more of a monastery and keepers of information. Um, they, they're kind of in charge of the different libraries and upkeep of culture throughout the continent. Um, house Tyrell is the media and publications house. They're the ones who are in charge of publishing the different broadsheets and disseminating information among the different uh, factions of the cities. Ooh, if we control the media, we can control the people. Let's join and work for the media so we can eventually control it. Uh, then there's House Ilvero, whose imports, like you, like I had said earlier. And then finally there's House Sephiro, who is one of the kind of quote-unquote despised houses. Um, there are much more in it just for the title. They're not necessarily a major political player, even though they do have ties to the Imperium. Hmm. I'd say we either go with the small monastery people and work for them and try to find work within their land, or we can go for the people who have arcane knowledge since that would be useful in the understanding of this item that we have aboard our ship. Uh, I, yeah, go ahead. I, well, I was going to say, I wonder if we should be so upfront with the fact that we possess that. Yeah, because... I mean, of course we're not going to reveal it quite yet until we gain their trust. But later on, they could possibly tell us about how it works. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I My vote is for the monastery. I think those guys know how to keep a secret. Okay. We need a tiebreaker. Mm. Monastery. Alright. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> I said, I said either monastery or chain. So, part of my vote was towards monastery anyway. All right. Just because they're small, and as you said, they don't seem like they would rat us out as easily. Okay. Who knows though? Then let's see what the monkey monks are all about. Okay, so in order to get to their territory, you're going to have to kind of navigate northwards and then head down the strait in the center um, of bisecting the continent. Um, they're uh, farther north on the, along, the, along that path and then to the west. Um, it's going to take you about three days to get there, even in your speedy ship. Yeah. Okay. So, as you kind of prep to head to the to the barony of House Harval, is there anything that you would like to do with your ship? Or just study in general. Hmm. Well, we should raise the new sail at least towards the end of our journey. Once we get into the inlet, probably. So we aren't as conspicuous in this gigantic floating ship. Not gigantic, but... Mm -hmm. Floating ship. Can we take a long rest while we're out here? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You 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 have three days. That's at least three. Alright. Take a long rest. And two. And then back to max health. <laughs> hmm.
Okay. So as you're begin, beginning to kind of navigate upwards um, into the into the strait heading towards House Harval's territory. Um, you're kind of in, in the middle of day two. Nothing exciting has happened. You've been managing to keep as much of a low profile as you can, kind of maintaining, modifying water shapes to kind of flow with your boat above, uh, hiding the fact that it's floating above the water and uh, it's mo it's worked prim uh, primarily um, uh, as you you've kind of passed through the different ships and it's a very hot uh, muggy day uh, you see different small villages and towns kind of cropped up around the strait and then they kind of uh, fester off into large mountainous cliffs uh, very sheer and uh, ragged as though the continent has been slowly being torn apart up the middle uh, with the tectonic plate movements beneath the waves um, and I just have to wait for my Google to load because yeah Shark man. Ooh ha ha. Ooh. <laughs> uh -uh. Damn, how old is that movie now? Okay. So as you are uh, moving along with the with the current down the street, uh, the sun is midday, it's warm out, it's hot out, kind of beating down. Um, you see kind of almost a sail kind of rising in above the waves uh, around your ship and then kind of sinking down immediately after um, you see something kind of rising up ahead and then kind of down it's almost uh, if you follow you can see it kind of surfacing here and there around your ship but never really cresting or never really showing itself in full. Uh, as far as the waters, they're, while they're definitely uh, reflecting the blue lights from the, star, from the sky, it's not the cleanest, and so you can definitely tell that there is something underneath the waves lurking, kind of waiting. It, it feels the disturbances that your ship is causing the energies that are being given off even slightly just as remote vibrations in the, in the waves. Well, that's unsettling. Okay. Uh, where is everyone on the ship? Uh, I'm at the wheel. I'm taking a rest somewhere on the ship, I guess, in my room. There really isn't a room. There, there's the captain's quarters, which serves as... Um, more of a study. Yeah, it, it serves more as the... Um, as the wheelhouse, where you can, where you can control the ship from. 
Mm. Sleep on deck. Yeah. Well, then I'm just on the deck. Okay. Yeah. I guess. I tie myself to the bottom of the ship and just chill there. Actually, wait, that wouldn't even put me underwater, would it? No, it probably wouldn't. <laughs> the water would taunt me. <laughs> I'm fine with it, really. Okay. But no, wait, are you are you actually under the ship? Uh, wait, 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 so what's going on? There's something under the ship. Oh, sh uh, no. <laughs> I might do that. I might do that later, but no, I'm not going to I'm not going to risk my life for a joke. <laughs> okay. I'll stay on the ship for the time being. Okay. You feel the ship kind of rock. Like it like it got whacked by something. Uh, you feel it kind of shift in its position and kind of slowly tilt back onto course. Huh. That's a bit funny. There's a fish trying to touch the butt. Well, I'm going to touch the fish's butt if it does that again. I look into the water and try to see anything with my sharky eyes. Roll me a perception check. Ooh. Okay. Oh! Nine. It's bad when the, the skill modifier is double what you roll. Oh no. Okay. You look into you look over at the side of the ship into the water. Um, it's mostly the same kind of murky blue with hints of with sea foam kind of breaking over the surface over and over. There's a small flash of a almost yellow green, like hints of red, but it kind of immediately shifts right back into water. And you feel the boat jolt again, this time coming from the opposite side. Ooh. Can can I make a check? You may certainly try, yes. Alright. I'm rolling. <laughs> and I get <coughs> I got a 17. Okay. Vash, you kind of look over um, kind of in an opposite area to where um, uh, Karis was. Kind of opposite end. You look into the water and maybe separated by a good three feet. You see a kind of large triangular shape. A kind of in the water, uh, -oh. uh, large pearly glassy eyes staring right back at you. Big squid. Uh, you you see it kind of curling backward beneath, and so after about maybe two feet after after the head, it's completely submerged. Mm. Okay. How big and are we talking? It is going to leap out of the water and attempt to attack you. Then we let's roll initiative. Can I roll animal handling to to uh, try and determine if I've seen this before? I don't really think that would be animal handling. Maybe survival. Okay, I'll roll survival. Uh, sixteen. I rolled an initiative of 24. Ooh, nice. Wait, I need to roll initiative too. Uh, eight. Eight initiative. My and initiative. 16 on survival. 18. Okay. <coughs> My god, I have advantage on initiative. How am I doing this? We you have eight, and you have advantage. Yeah, I have advantage in plus three. I rolled a five and a three. Well, let's hope this thing rolls really bad. Uh, 17. Okay. Okay, so, but it has surprise round as well, so. It's going to leap out of the water and attempt to make a bite attack 
against Vash as you were the one who peered oh. down and kind of were staring at it at its eyes for just a quick second. So Damn it. that is an unnatural twenty. Mm. Don't worry, it's not that bad. Okay. It you see it kind of lurch out of the water. Um large toothy maw. Uh several fangs kind of pointing downward as they kind of clamp around you and you fight as much as you can to kind of push it off and eventually the jaw kind of slacks and you can slide yourself out from it. Uh it's kind of got a curling tongue that just kind of wraps around you and just kind of yeah. constricts a little bit. Uh, you slide off in its large yellowed uh, form, large kind of reddish brown sails, uh, kind of slump right back into the water. Uh, how much damage did I take? Oh, uh, yes, thirteen oh, okay. points of piercing. I f I forgot that because of feral instinct, I can act normally on my turn. Yeah, like I'm not surprised. Okay, it is your turn then, your action. Alright. Uh, so wait, is he not on the ship now? It is not on the ship. It is a water creature. Uh, I can act normally, but only if I rage. Uh, let's see, I could, I could rage and, like, throw a javelin at him. If I went to the side of the ship, could I see him? It's gonna take a bit. You, you can certainly try. Uh, yeah, okay, what the heck. Uh, I rage, and I use my 40 movement to get to the edge of the ship, uh, and I pull out a, a javelin, and I chuck it at where I think he is. Yeah, okay. har harpoon! You watch uh, as the creature kind of is reeling from uh, its body around from where it had attacked at Vash, and... Uh, its body kind of just forming around the waves and around the bottom of the ship. You throw your javelin. Uh, roll to make an attack. All right. Uh, buh, 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 buh. <clears throat> uh -huh. uh, okay, that is going to be a 19 plus... Uh, yes. Uh, 19 plus 9, 28. Yes, that is definitely going to hit. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is going to do 1d6 plus uh, 8 damage. Where's my d6? 5 plus 8, 13 piercing damage. Okay. You watch as its uh, golden form kind of swirls around, and you land your javelin kind of right in between its scaly hide, uh, piercing it, and there seems to be a small point of where some reds and blues and, uh, have kind of separated it out, you know, just peeling off from its, from its uh, flesh as it disappears beneath the waves, uh, its tail kind of flopping up, uh, large with two f uh, fins on the side, and very jagged edges, and then disappears beneath the waves. Vash, it is Do your I... action. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, sorry. Uh, uh, Karis, it, you, you had something else? You wanted to... I, I was just going to ask if, like, now that I've attacked it, do I have a better idea of what this is, this mystery fish? Okay. Um, maybe not the exact speciation, but you do know it is of the basilisk family. Oh! Awesome. Oh, goody! Um, can I see it still? Can I shoot at it? Um... You cannot see it directly. Any attacks made against it will be made at disadvantage. Uh, well, if I can't see it, then what's the point of attacking? Attack. 
Mm, I don't know what to do. I guess I'll, I'll heal myself. Uh, you can ready an action if you'd like to just try and see if when it pops up again. Okay, I already. What is, does that mean? So when it pops up, I'll just automatically attack it. Uh, it means you'll use your reaction to fire your weapon. Okay. Well uh, then, but if I'll you do, do that, that, you won't you won't be able to heal yourself because cure wounds is an action. That's that's fine. I don't need to heal myself that much. I'm at eighty one. Okay. So you kind of. Ready yourself, taking aim. Uh, Gisal, it is your turn. Um, all right. I'm gonna dive headfirst into the water, close to the the being. Okay. You may you kind of leap off the water, leap leap off the side of the boat, landing uh, in the, in the water. It's a wonderful dive. Um. And I want the rest. Of God, what is it? called uh my echolocation okay so you have so a very I can, clear I, I have blind sight to 120 feet so i can tell where he is and what how big he is and stuff okay this is a huge monstrosity uh size wise <laughs> and yes you are very clearly able to identify its location all right i'm gonna can I swim to it and make an attack, or did I use too much movement already? No, you can swim to it and make an attack. Odd. 14 plus... I rolled really bad on that. I think. No, I mean, I guess that's normal. It was 14. So, 18 on both. Okay. Uh, your whale form... Constitution. 5. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Even if he was, it would still be disadvantaged because of the cloak. If only those could stack. The attack is a 19. You gotta be kidding me. I see he's 18. He hits me. Damn you, 10th level feature. Have to because of rage. Okie dokie. So roll a d20. Alright. Ooh, so he can fire as a reaction, reload as a bonus action, and then fire as a main action. Am I understanding this? Right. <laughs> right, so couldn't... Can't he reload as a... Is it reload as a bonus action? Yeah. So he could reload as a bonus action, he'd still have his main action left, right? Oh, okay. I All rolled right. a 21 for the D D20. Alright. And let's roll for damage. I get 33. <laughs> Kablam! Okay. Wait, can I use my bonus action to reload? Thank you. Yes. Yes, hold action again. Okay, let's see. Let's hope this is better than a 5 this time. Alright, it's a 13. Is that it? Do I? 
Is it the only thing I could do? Oh, okay. To me, no. Hello. All I heard was once again it's attacking you, and then it cut off. All right, I'll do that. Let me see what my D twenty is. I roll 22. All right, hang on. I'm editing my health. I'm at 58 health now. Shit. All right, roll. All right, 34 damage. Use my bonus action to reload and then hold my action to ready for it. Uh, I thought it's still my turn. Oh, that's right. That's right. Shit. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I use my movement to uh, leap, leap at him. Is he? He's in the water, right? I leap into the water, uh, great axe drawn. I use all 40 of my movement to get as close to him as I can. Uh, do I get right up to him? Good. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, I'm going to attack him twice and use, uh... Let's see, this first attack, I am going to use a uh, great weapon master on it. And I'll make it reckless. Natural 20. Uh, so if it's I'll, reckless... Let me roll again with advantage. Okay, I'll keep the natural 20. Actually, yeah, how does Reckless work in that case? Yeah. Oh, no, not, not Reckless. Great Weapon Master. Fair enough. Okay. Plus my uh, rage damage, plus the brutal critical roll one additional weapon damage die. So let's let's see. I see. Three twelve plus ten plus strength plus rage. Five. Rolled the dice under my table. Ten, seven, uh, seventeen. Uh, Twenty-two plus five. Twenty-seven plus rage. Uh, thirty plus ten. Forty damage with this first swing. Uh. Dang. 
never got an extra attack him. Oh well, I guess I can't be that upset. Yeah, I uh, if decapitation is an option, that's what I do. Woohoo! All right. So it was just a regular basilisk. I thought you sent an abolith after us, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> You're right, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess that was just a random encounter. I climb back onto the ship. I'm going to whale time by the ship just so I don't waste my <laughs> my thing. Whale time. Whale time. I move, if I double dash on my turn, I can move 300 feet in a turn. I, th I thought about if I made a monk for this character. I could become a living torpedo that is faster than all other ships. He just swims over to a ship, jumps onto it, grabs someone, and throws them off. <laughs> I don't know, man. 10th level monks can pick up some real speed. Oh no. Did he say maybe? Yeah. 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 He said maybe. I don't I don't like when he said navy. That was not a very fun time. I don't know what to do. What do you guys want to do? Hmm. Uh. 
I don't know. Um, Tanner, do you have an idea? I rolled to know. <laughs> Na- I just rolled another natural 20. You, you know I everything. I don't You're actually very... know. No, Tanner, you know everything. Your character just goes insane because he, he knows that he is just I'm a just markings of... on a piece of paper! All right. Ooh, good thing I had that plus one to history, or that would have been tough to make. <laughs> All right. Then uh, we stay steady on course. Keep an eye out for any more basilisks. Ooh. Wait, wait, you said carved into? The emblems carved into it? Or the, or the monster? Oh, okay. That's what I thought you said. That's cool. I, I like when buildings are like that. Hmm. All right. Scottish assassins. The back, like the bagpipes that shoot fire out of them when you blow into them. Interesting. Very interesting. They greet us with our most powerful assassin, that guy. <laughs> Just some random dude. Yeah, I was, I was wondering when someone was going to find that picture. Hmm. Hmm. Perhaps they got scared away by that basilisk. Perhaps they're all dead. That could also happen. It might just be the fact that it's a monastery and people don't... Go out of it? Yeah. That's probably it. Believe well, let's me. make ourselves... Known? Known, yeah. <laughs> let's stock the ship and head on in. Sounds good to me. Mm-hmm.
It leads straight into the straight. Uh, it must be very straight. So not gay. Okay. Hey. <laughs> All right, sweet. Yeah, I uh I still wanted to kill that fucking gnome. As long as we keep going away from that robot, we should be fine. Uh, he, well, he may or may not end up dead. Little fucker. Uh, cool. I like this character. See you later. Alright, see ya. Yeah.